Here we go. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome, my lovelies. I am Pinky, as you guys know. If you guys are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, share, and comment. We're going to do a reading for all zodiac signs to see how your person feels about you. So I just decided... <laughs> to move forward with this reading. All right, let's begin. All right, I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ancestors and archangels, please step forward. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly. Speak to me about their person. How do they feel about them? We're gonna begin here, of course, with Virgo. It is Virgo season. Congratulations for you Virgos out there. I have a few family members. I love you guys. And happy return of the sun. We have tons of spell videos coming through for you guys. If you guys are interested in any of Manifest, uh, uh, Manifest Your Destiny book, uh, Shadow Work book is coming. And um, Manifestation journals. You can find all of that on the description link below as well as any of our services if you guys are interested in personal readings, okay? I don't know why it's doing that. All right, let's begin here with Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You guys, sorry if uh, my energy is a little bit low. It's been a very, very long day. I've done three videos back to back. You guys subscribe because we have tons of spell videos as well as tons of readings and other manifestation videos and all of that good stuff, so... We are on a journey of expansion. So you guys definitely stay tuned. Like I said, we have shadow work journal coming through for you guys in October. Uh, it is a journal book that is going to help you work your shadow. Uh, shadow work is very important for many different aspects. But if you are in the manifestation journey, it is definitely something that must be done. If you are in the practice or a practitioner, you know the importance of this as well. So, all right, moving on. Let's begin here with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what their person or how their person feels about them. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, because it is your season, Virgo. I love Virgos. I connect with you guys. Um, amazing. All right, let's see, Virgo. Here we go. All right. Oof, okay. So we're starting off here. Um, let me show you guys really quick. We have the nine of pentacles, the empress and the seven of swords. Okay. So in regards to, let me move this here. Okay. So in regards to how they see you, the nine of pentacles, they see you as a boss. They see you as someone that doesn't really need anything or anyone they see you very much um, independent. And though this could be a positive thing, sometimes it could be a negative when we're talking about relationships. Why? Because you're giving off the energy of, I don't need nothing or anyone, which is empowering, but sometimes it can come off as, why would someone want to be with someone that doesn't necessarily need them or that makes them feel like they're not needed or wanted? Now with the Empress card here, um, how they feel about you. They see you as a person that they are definitely interested in. However, Virgo, with the seven of swords here, I would highly encourage you guys to try the best you can to not show off or to not be showy. And the reason I say that is because seven of swords makes me feel like they're thinking more what they can get from you or what you can do for them. And sometimes this could be misinterpreted. So what I mean by that is you may not see it as showing off or being showy, but constantly telling them where you've been, what you're doing, you know, things like of that nature for people that are not necessarily that laser focused, or they're not necessarily very motivated, or perhaps they're not worldly or whatever their situation may be. It can be an alarm, an alarm for them and, um, negative way like oh you know 
I've never really been with a boss bitch, or I've never been with someone that has their life together or someone that has goals and aspirations. Like maybe I can get more from them. Um, so I feel like they are being drawn or primarily more focused on what you're able to do for them. So I would be very cautious of this person that you may be dealing with Virgo, especially if they are oversharing with you, oversharing their problems, their money issues, um, their living situation. If you're in the process of getting to know them, then obviously those are red flags. Uh, you don't need someone that is going to be telling you they're having financial difficulties because it's like, okay, if you're having financial difficulties, why would you be open to love? Like you're not responsible to get what I'm saying. Um, so I would just tell you to be cautious about that. Um, now, if it's a person you've been with for quite a while and they're going through some difficulties, then I would understand. However, I do feel that with the seven of swords, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, um, you know, they may get to the point of feeling like if you've been with them for a while and they feel like they're going through difficulties, but you're making it easier for them. It, it's clingy energy because it's beneficial. So just be careful with that Virgo. All right. We're moving on here with Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. How does their person feel about Libra? Libra, sun, moon, rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, definitely like, share, and comment. Let me know you guys enjoy it so I can continue bringing these videos to you guys. I do read all my messages, all the comments that you guys leave. Uh, feedback is always amazing for me. This is not an I channel. It is a us channel. Okay. All right. Libra. Let's see what's going on here. Page of Swords, the Hanged Man, and the High Priestess. Oof. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is, what I'm seeing here is, there is a bit of, there is a bit of confusion. I feel like they're not being completely honest or transparent with you. Um, they are definitely watching what you're doing, Libra, or paying very close attention to your moves. Um, I feel like they're not being completely honest or transparent in regards to their current situation. So I'm not sure if you're dealing with a partner that may have a sticky situation, someone from the past, but I feel like they're not being honest and they're keeping this information from you. I would advise you to try the best you can to be upfront and straightforward. What do you expect from this relationship and what you're wanting from them? Try the best you can to be upfront about it. Why? Because you don't want them to string you along and you don't want them to be playing with your emotions. Um, again, if it is a sticky situation, like an example, well, they got out of a relationship, but, um, you know, they're trying to whatever situation they're, they're still dealing with the next or something. Um, and you feel like they're kind of painting it in a way of like uh, saying, you know, oh, it's because I have to deal with them because there's children involved or stuff like that make them be transparent about it. Um, if they get defensive, then you know without a doubt that they're not being completely honest and you decide what you want to do with that. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, Venus. By the way, you guys, we are going to be having a full moon, super blue full moon on the 31st of August and it is in Pisces. So a lot of you guys may be experiencing or will be experiencing being a bit emotional, um, but pay very close attention to your dreams if you are having dreams as th that may be connecting to your higher self that may be giving you some type of information or wanting to give you some type of clarity in regards to situations that you may be going through. Also, I would highly encourage you guys to do any type of money manifestation or money spell work um, or love for those of you guys that are looking for love as it's going to be very explosive energy, okay? All right, let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. How does Scorpio's partner or person feel about them? Give us clarity, give us insight. Thank you. Okay, here we go. We have the Two of Cups, the Justice card, and the Four of Swords. Okay, so what they're showing me here. We have the two of cups and the two of cups is emotional connection. 
justice card is a balancing of scales. If you have been going through a bit of a challenging situation, Scorpio, with your partner or with your person, uh, maybe even a bit disconnected um, because of life, I feel like it's not so much sticky or messy or anything like that. It has more to do with life in general. Um, the positive in this is that there is major balance that's coming through for you guys. And it's going to bring to you a lot of ease or a lot of feeling more in alignment with yourself. Um, especially those of you guys that have been having difficulty in the relationship and it's keeping you up at night, or you've been tossing and turning or stressing about the situation. Try the best you can to detach from that situation so that you don't feel, you know, overwhelmingness or depression, even, um, what they're telling you is surrender to the process. It is necessary. Whatever's happening with you guys right now, it is necessary, uh, for both of you for the betterment of you. And for some of you guys, it could be trusting, learn to trust Scorpio, because when I see the justice card with the four of swords, it usually indicates someone has been burdened in the past, or like you have such or place such high expectations on your partner that it can be emotionally draining for them, or they may even hesitate or have hesitated in regards to how difficult the relationship is. So again, the four of wands with the justice card is let things balance themselves out. Do not stress over it and do not become overburdened, not overburdened. So, sorry. Do not become um, smothering to them. Like give them room to breathe, give them room, like just trust them in this process. Um, it's going to draw you guys closer and it's going to stabilize the relationship. Okay. All right. Moving on here, Scorpio. We are going now to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagis. Spirit guides give us clarity for Sagittarius. How does their person feel about them? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Saggy. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarians. I have family members. I have a sister that is a Sagittarius. I have a beautiful niece that is a Saggy. You guys have a temper, let me tell you. <laughs> But you guys have the most nurturing of hearts. All right. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Okay, here we go. We have the three of wands, the two of cups, and the justice card. Interesting. Some of you guys may be dealing with a Scorpio. Okay, so three of wands, two of cups, and the justice card. They're asking you to be patient. You have to wait for something. This is a process that's currently happening right now. Um, if you're feeling, if you're feeling disconnected or you feel like your partner is not, you guys are not in sync right now. Um, as an example, they're calling you and you are busy and then you text them and then they answer you two hours later, almost like you guys kind of seem to miss each other. A lot is happening right now. And what they're telling you, uh, Sagittarius, that try the best you can to focus primarily on what you're trying to get done now. So this is as an aspect, um, as an example, sorry, as an example, uh, you guys keep missing each other. Stop stressing about it. Stop worrying about it. Uh, put your energy or focus towards other things in your life. Right now, what they're telling you, it's important to water every aspect of your life, not just your love life. And um, you will definitely find the balance. There is a need for balance here. For some of you guys, uh, you can be dealing with a Libra. Oh, or a water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But what they are showing me here is that there is a need to bring balance. Um, if you are a giver, Sagittarius, it's time to stop giving and allow your partner to step up and do what is necessary. You cannot carry a relationship all by yourself. Three of Wands is waiting, but it's also expectation. And the Two of Cups is knowing and understanding that, um, yeah, you love them and you care for them. Um, but it is important to not stop loving yourself in the process, not to water yourself down or to fill their cup, leaving you empty. Balance needs to be very important. And that's something that you need to learn um, right now, Sagittarius. All right, moving on here. If you guys like these readings, like I said, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All right, so that was 
Capricorn, Sagittarius, <laughs> Capricorn. Let's go to Capricorn. By the way, you guys, you guys like my shirt? It is Tiffany. But in Spanish, you guys, you see that? It says La Toxica, which is the toxic one. You know, we got to represent our shadow side here. <laughs> All right, Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Give us clarity. Give us insight. Okay, one more. Thank you, Spirit. All right, here we go. Capricorn, we have the Six of Swords, the Star card, and the Queen of Wands. Okay. Ooh, okay. So I'm getting immediate messages here. Now, for some of you guys, if you are dealing with a situation where you're no longer in communication or things have been a bit rough lately, what Spirit is telling you is that it's very important right now to not wait, to not stay in the sidelines, to not wait it out. What they're telling you is that if the person that you're dealing with or that you're being with is not in alignment with you, you got to keep it pushing Capricorn. Do not sit there and wait for people to figure out what it is that they want or if they even want you, because that is, you deserve better than that, first of all. And second, you're the star. You get me like, you don't have to allow, or I should say, you shouldn't have to give a person the opportunity to figure out if it's you that they want in their life. Because a person that is ready is going to jump wholeheartedly into what they're doing. So if you're sitting there waiting it out, you're wasting your time. You are waiting or giving room for someone that is unworthy or undeserving of you. And you're still not going to get the ultimate result that you're looking for. So what they're showing me here is, and the reason I'm saying this is because I see that there is hesitation on your partner's side. It could be that they are unsure if they want to be single, they are unsure if they want to be with you, or they are unsure if it's you, the one that they want to choose. So with the six of swords and the star card, keep it pushing. Do not put yourself on the sidelines for anyone Capricorn. And I find this very interesting because I feel like oftentimes I don't have to say that to Capricorns, um, but they are telling you, look at yourself as the star Capricorn. Look at yourself as what you put out is also what you receive. Why? Because you are a mirror reflection of who you are inside. So if you sit there and wait it out for someone that is unsure, there is something that's going on within you that makes you feel or that you feel, right, um, undeserving of being treated kindly or to be respected or to be seen or treated like the queen or king that you deserve. It's time that you start to treat yourself the way you want others to treat you, Capricorn. And with the queen of wands, it is important to highlight. It is important to highlight your confidence, what you bring to the table, what you do, when it comes to relationships, you know, oftentimes Capricorn have a difficulty letting go of things. Sometimes you hold on, um, you hold on a little too long past the relationship. So what I mean by that is you could be in a relationship and you know, it's over and it's done and it's like, it's, there's no fixing it. And sometimes you have a tendency of holding on to that until the other person is willing to give up. And it has a lot to do with your sign, but it also has to do with the fact of, you know, you're wanting to feel like you're going to be vindicated or like it was worth it in the end. And that's what has you holding on a little too longer to things than you should. So again, it's about knowing and trusting in yourself, knowing that you deserve better, knowing that you have to put yourself in a, like put yourself as a priority sometimes, especially if the partner's not willing to do that for you. You know what I mean? If they're not making you a priority, if they're not making time for you, why are you sitting there waiting for them? Why are you waiting for them to make up their mind? Why are you dating them after six months and you still don't know where you stand with them? Do you see what I'm saying? It's about making yourself a priority because only then will you be able to attract a person that is going to reciprocate your energy. All right, Cappy. Moving on here, we're going to go with Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, my lovely Aquarians. I have a lot of Aquarian friends, you guys, a lot. 
And I have a few family members that are Aquarius too. I totally vibe with Aquarius, which is uh, completely normal for me because I do have a lot of Aquarius in my chart, uh, especially in a very prominent one. Um, I just love you guys' way of thinking, the way you guys talk. I definitely connect with you guys on an intellect level, uh, intellectual level. You guys are just amazing people. But you guys have difficulty embracing new things. All right. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see how their person feels about them. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, here we go. We have Page of Pentacles, the Empress. Ooh, and the Three of Swords. Okay. Pretty harsh energy here. You've been holding on or waiting, right? You've been holding on or waiting to... I'm getting a few messages here for you guys, Aquarius. Okay. So one of the things that's coming to mind is if you have children with a past lover or partner and it's not working out or you guys haven't been together, you guys are currently separated, but you do, there is children involved, do not allow them, Aquarius, to play you. Okay? Do not allow them to abuse your trust or your loving nature of learning or trying to prioritize your children because they can be nasty with it. And I feel like they take advantage of how much you're willing to sacrifice to keep your kid or your kids um, emotionally and mentally okay through this separation or through this breakup. With the three of swords, there is definitely some type of hurt, some type of pain, um, that is currently being experienced or that you may be currently going through. Um, but ultimately I feel like there was some type of, there's some type of wanting or feeling like they have the upper hand because of circumstance. So again, if you guys have children, it's kind of like the scenario of they push your buttons. Um, they want things to go their way. Whenever you need them to do a favor, they're not willing to do it, or it comes at some type of, um, at some type of cost, uh, some type of favor, quote unquote. And I feel that they're doing all of this because they know that you are willing to sacrifice, like I said, to keep your kids or your kid um, happy and in a healthy environment. But it's time for you to stand your ground, Aquarius, and stop, you know, stop doing for them. Honestly, uh, I feel like they use and abuse, you know, every chance they get. And that is not okay. Especially it's giving me like the energy of, you know, the partner that they break up and then they're nasty afterwards. And they're always speaking ill about you to their kids, or they're always complaining and you're over here trying to make it okay, or trying to be passive or keep it respectful. Um, but what they're showing me here is that it's coming at the expense of your peace of mind. So again, it's time for you to create either some type of distance or stop doing favors or stop feeling bad for them um, because they're going to continue doing this. Now, for those of you guys that don't have children, what I'm seeing here is there's some type of pain or some type of hurt feeling betrayed, and it could potentially have to do with something that has to do or is connected to money. So this could be, as an example, you were dating someone and they were struggling. They were going through some type of situation and you tried to help them out. And in that process of helping them out, they abused your trust and your kind heart. And you recently found out that maybe what they were telling you that they would be using the money towards, they used it for something else. Or you found out that uh, they're not necessarily, they weren't honest about the favor that they asked. So again, it's time for you to stop allowing these people into your life, people that are only taking, people that are not reciprocating or that are not giving back. I'll tell you something, Aquarius, people that have, we have two types of people in this world, the takers and the givers, right? And if you're able to balance both, then it's good to possess both qualities because they are virtues. But if you're only dealing with takers, 
the thing about takers is that they're never going to one day wake up and realize, oh, I'm taking too much. And then they're going to like a taker will never stop taking. And that's the negative about that. And that's the horrible part of that. Because if you're a giver, you will often find yourself with partners that take advantage of that or that take advantage of your trust or, you know, the innocence in you sometimes. Uh, sometimes Aquarians have uh, innocence to them um, in the aspect of, you know, you needing your space. And, you know, if you're dating someone and the person is, you know, a bit clingy and all of a sudden they're like wanting their space, wanting their time. You're okay with it because you need that for yourself. So you'll be fine with it without realizing that that person wasn't naturally that way. And if they're being that way, there's a reason behind it. Do you get what I'm saying? So again, it is important to understand, to be wise about picking your partner's Aquarius. You cannot continue dealing with people that are only takers. All right, moving on here. We're going to go to Pisces. Pisces, we're having this blue, uh, super blue moon in your sign of Pisces uh, on the 31st of August. So try to stay grounded, Pisces. Try the best you can not to put yourself in situations where you're overwhelmed because you will definitely lash out at people and then later on regret it. Your emotions are going to be off the chart. So <laughs> be mindful of that. All right, let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Pisces, we have the Emperor, the Eight of Cups, and the Ace of Pentacles. All right, so what I'm seeing here, Pisces, is there is a lack of masculine energy happening here. So what I mean by that is if you are a female Pisces, then you continuously keep putting yourself in this relationship as the masculine. And you have to stay, or I would suggest for you to step back and stay in your feminine energy. Why do I say this? Because I feel like there is a bit of unhappiness or feeling unfulfilled. And it has a lot to do with the fact that, and you may currently be feeling like you're not sure if you should walk away, give yourself an opportunity or continue holding on to a relationship that is not really giving to you right now. And when I say giving, it's not just on a material aspect. It could be emotionally, it could be physically. Um, and of course it could be financially as well. So the scenario I am seeing here is the emperor card is having the need for structure in this relationship. There, something needs to change in this relationship in order to be able to fix it. Um, and if there's no fixing, if there's no structure, if there's no, let's say, um, there's no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, it just went. If there is no structure, if there's no boundaries, they're going to continue walking all over you, Pisces. With the emperor card, this is masculine energy. So again, if you're a female and you're with your partner and your partner is a lazy ass, sorry to say it, but that's how I'm seeing it. And your partner is a lazy ass and you're constantly being the one to carry the relationship or you're constantly the one to go out there and make the money or you're constantly the one to figure out how are we paying bills? How are we doing this? How are we doing that? And then all of a sudden you're getting tired of it and you want them to step up. You have to stop doing it. That's the only way they're going to step up. You have to stop doing. You have to allow them to step into their masculine energy. And it doesn't matter if you're female or masculine. Someone is emasculated in this connection. And the reason why they are emasculated has a lot to do with the fact that they solely have a habit of relying on you to fix it or make it work or pay the bills or whatever situation may be. So that's why you're feeling unfulfilled. There's moments where you are ecstatic about wanting to fix the relationship, but then there's moments where you feel burdened, where you feel like you want to walk away from this connection. And the Ace of Pentacles is here to tell you, again, if you're able to put some type of structure in this relationship or in this connection or allow them to step into their masculine energy, then you're not going to, you're not going to feel like they're turning their back on you. Because I see you constantly trying to figure out, and I'm seeing money here. So it's almost like 
you're the one that has to figure it out. And that could be lonely. And if you are a female, that puts you in a masculine energy. And when you are in a masculine energy, Pisces, you're going to feel unfulfilled. You're going to feel like you are losing respect for your partner. Or you're going to start to look around. And again, there there needs to be some type of there needs to be some type of structure in this connection. There needs to be some type of boundaries, you know, laying down the law, so to speak. And if you feel like you're unable to do that, or if you feel like they are unable to do that, then stop hesitating and it start to embrace a new beginning. It start to, it's time to start walking away from what's holding you back. Because I see you having dreams, being determined, uh, having aspirations even, and you may find that oftentimes they judge you or they burst your bubble. Who wants that in a partner? You want someone that's going to nurture your creativity that is going to push you to, yes, baby, go for it, make it happen, you know, be cheering you on. Like, and if you don't have that, what's the point of being in a relationship? What's the point of dealing with a partner and the responsibilities that come with being in a partnership, but not fully having a partnership? All right. Moving on here. That's pretty heavy energy, Pisces. All right, we are going with Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their partner feel about them? How does their partner feel about them? Oh, we got cards flying out. We have the double card here. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their partner feel about them? All right, here we go. We have the double card, the judgment, ooh, and the chariot. Powerful cards here. We have nothing but major arcanas. Three cards, <laughs> three majors. All right. So I feel very strongly, Aries, like you guys are going through a cycle in your life right now where there may be experiencing a bit of too much possessiveness or jealousy. I feel like you've made a decision and you're running with it, Aries. Um, and this is not necessarily a good thing. Why? Because I feel like you're changing and it hasn't nothing to do with you or with your soul evolution or self growth. I feel like it's more to please them. Um, yeah, definitely here with the devil card. There's a lot of like toxic energy that the partner needs to work on. Could be past experiences, could be something that they've been through where, they are not trusting very easily. However, with the judgment card, I feel like you've made the decision. Um, you've made the decision to continue pursuing this connection or this relationship. But the thing about it, sweetheart, is that if you are changing, not for yourself, not to be better, not because you're choosing, but you're changing because you're trying to accommodate your partner or you're trying to make it easy for you guys to make it work, then it's not necessarily for good. Why? Because you are molding yourself to what your partner wants and you're rushing it too. with the chariot. It's like you're just taking action. You're trying to best accommodate them or to work it out or to fix it dealing with the uncomfortableness of their being a bit too possessive or being too jealous or being too demanding, even like how long can you go pretending to be something that you're not? How long can you pretend that you're okay with their jealousy? Yeah, it may be sexy in the beginning, but after a while it gets pretty fucking boring or it gets pretty fucking annoying. Um, and you know, you're explosive. So Again, is it really, are you doing these changes because you want to, or are you doing them to appease your partner? And if it is to appease your partner and to be okay with your partner, how long can you go on dealing with things that you don't want to be dealing with because you're not naturally this way? Again, judgment is, you know, worrying, um, trying the best to be very, like, uh, very self-aware of yourself because you're not trying to trigger Devil card is bondage, it's um, possessiveness, jealousy, 
not trusting, um, you know, and the chariot, you're like, you got, you know, <laughs> what's that word? You got, um, you got blinders on, you're just focused on that relationship or focused towards like going towards the goal of the ultimate goal that you're wanting from this relationship. But again, I ask you, I encourage you to ask yourself this question. How long are you going to be okay with this? You know, we teach our partners how we want to be treated by what we allow, what we let fly, what we let slide by. Um, and essentially you can later, you know, tell them, you know, I hate how possessive you are. Like in the beginning, if that's how they were and you were okay with it and you didn't say nothing, you, you don't really have room to complain about something that you either enjoyed in the beginning or that you were willing to deal with. So again, my advice would be to not rush into this. And if you are experiencing this already, and it is something that is bothering you, you have to speak up because if not, you're going to feel suppressed. You're going to feel like you're being held back and you're going to feel unfulfilled ultimately. And in any partnership or relationship, if you're not being fulfilled, what are the chances of you being tempted? Very high. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see how your partner feels about you, Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their partner feel about them? Okay, one more shuffle. Thank you. Here we go. We have 10 of cups, the hanged man, and the knight of swords. All right, Taurus. So 10 of cups is having the desire or the want to stay in a happy place. Hanged man at what expense, at what cost? The hanged man is all about having the need to see things from a different perspective. But it can also indicate that the the being stuck or feeling stuck but having the need to move, having the need to react. Like you've been dealing with this for a while, Taurus. How long are you going to be dealing with it? I feel strongly like this message is coming through more so like Aries message. Um, but I feel like in this connection or in this relationship, Taurus, you're often the one to sacrifice either responsibilities or being the one to deal with everything or being the one to having the need to continue gluing the relationship or making it like move along um, with the Knight of Swords. It's like you may feel like you're getting a bit, what's the word I'm looking for, <clears throat> aggressive in your way of expressing. But the reason why you're feeling aggressive or your partner may be feeling like you're being a bit aggressive in the way you express um, is because it's been a ticking time bomb. It's something you've been dealing with for a while and you're lashing out now. Um, you are overreacting and it's not necessarily, again, it's not overreacting really. It's something that you've been suppressing for a while. The way your partner is feeling about you is they feel like you are a bit aggressive right now, Taurus, and they feel like you're not necessarily, um, you're not necessarily hearing them out, but I feel that the reason for it is because you may be fed up or you may be tired or you may be in a situation where you've been dealing with a lot and you're done sacrificing yourself or you're done realizing that you have been sacrificing yourself in this relationship. So the advice here would be to really take into account, Taurus, um, what is it that you're sacrificing in order to make this relationship work? If it is sacrificing of as an example, you guys live by a distance and you're the one that's going out there and you're the one that's visiting, you're the one that's making the effort. It's time to pull back and allow them to be the one to step up, to be the one to show you through actions. Um, but if it is sacrificing yourself or who you are to make this relationship work, is it really worth it? Because you, I'm seeing you here unrecognizable. And if you guys have friends or family around, do not be surprised if they tell you like you're changing or you're acting different or you're being different. I feel that this is something that's been progressively happening for a while now. And you're looking at yourself like, am I really happy? Like they're right. I am changing or I do feel like unhappy in this situation or I feel like I'm sacrificing certain aspects about myself so it's almost like a, 
of reflecting, internalizing, but also awareness that's coming through for you, Taurus. Um, and again, my advice is if you are ultimately sacri sacrificing yourself to make it work, is it really worth it in the end? Because at the end of the day, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to realize how much you've changed. And if you've changed for the better, that's good. But if you haven't and it's changed for the worse, then it's not good. I mean, if you were loving and caring, all of a sudden you're becoming cynical and cold and distant. That's not good. They're not doing you any favors and you're not evolving. If anything, you're kind of going backwards. So again, are you really happy? And if you're not, maybe it's time you cut this relationship out or end what's holding you back. All right. Moving on here. We're going to go now to Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Geminis. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their partner feel about them? If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Subscribe to our channel. Don't forget. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. We are having here the Queen of Swords, five of Pentacles. Ooh, Jesus. Okay. So we have the Queen of Swords, the Five of Pentacles, and the Tower. So there was some type of information that recently came through for you, Gemini. Or it could have been you, the one that decided to completely walk away from a relationship. And I feel like it was quick and sudden. If you weren't the one to walk away, then obviously you may be currently dealing with a partner that has either walked away or that was promising something. And all of a sudden they're like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. And you feel like the rug has been pulled out of you. Now, I feel very strongly with the five of pentacles, like they were kind of leading you on or they were making you think that they were willing to work this relationship out or that they were willing to put effort. And it was mostly to string you along. And I feel like now that you're realizing that you're coming to the understanding that change needed to happen. Um, it's almost like the blindfold is coming off of you. I'm not sure exactly what the situation was, but I feel like you are realizing that they weren't being genuine or authentic. I feel like there is almost this feeling of something very sudden, something very sudden that happened or that will be happening. And I feel like it has a lot to do with either them walking away, like completely ghosting you or completely ending the relationship and walking away. And you could have been in a place where maybe you were okay and you thought things were going good. And all of a sudden they cut you off and you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, um, but I, I'm going to be honest with you, Gemini. I feel like if you are currently going through this situation, I feel like it's going to be something that needed to happen whether it was, and for some of you guys, even if it was like a long-term relationship of many years, I'm, I'm sorry that you're currently going through this, but I feel like it was necessary at this point. I feel like they've been holding you back. I feel like they didn't appreciate you or they didn't value you. And they made you feel like you were asking for too much, or they made you feel like you were begging them. Um, and it's the universe way of, of waking you up and, and showing you or making you realize, uh, Gemini that you deserve better than that, that you deserve reciprocation, that you deserve someone to make you feel like you are magic, like you are the best thing on earth, not someone that is going to make you feel like you're so hard to love, like you're so hard to keep happy or satisfied because they are excusing that because they're not willing or able to give you what you ask for and what you deserve. And it's like a cop out for them. It's like, you know, you're so demanding or you're so moody or whatever the situation may be. And it's because they themselves are not evolved enough to be able to maintain a serious committed relationship or maintain any type of intimacy. So you deserve better than this, Gemini, if you are currently going through this Please do not allow them to come back into your life. Please do not text them nonstop. 
trying to communicate with them, trying to get some type of reaction out of them. If they are that easily to walk away from you, they aren't deserving of you. They are unworthy of you and shut the door on that or on them. All right, moving on here. We are going with Cancer now. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, here we go. We have the Hermit, the Page of Swords, and the Ten of Wands. Okay. So there may be a bit of distancing, a bit of not communication at all. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that the person that you were dealing with all of a sudden um, has become completely silent or has uh, detached from the situation, but I'm going to be honest. I see them stalking you on social media. I see you looking at everything that you're doing or watching what you're doing. Um, I see them very updated with what's going on in your life. But if as an example, you've noticed that their social media is kind of dead or they're not really posting it, they're being sneaky about it. They're being sneaky about what's going on in their life. They're trying the best they can to keep it hush or to keep it private all the while stalking you on social media. So it's giving me very narcissistic energy here, Cancer. If you are no longer communicating uh, with your person or with your partner, um, or all of a sudden, like I said, you've noticed that they're not very active on their social medias, stuff like that. They are watching you, but they're being sneaky. They're not being very straightforward. And I feel like they are very much keeping things hidden page of swords they're constantly looking at what you're doing um with the ten of wands i i feel very strongly like they may be multitasking and when i say multitasking i usually don't see any type of fuckery with the ten of wands when we're talking about relationships it usually indicates stress burdens stuff like that but i feel like they're juggling something or they're juggling multiple options so again if you feel like they've been silent or like radio silent, it's there's a reason why they're not being they're being sneaky is what's happening here. And uh, Page of Swords is constantly watching you, but from a distance or from afar. So if you are dealing with this type of situation, my advice would be to keep it pushing. Um, you don't want someone that keeps a lot of secrets, especially if you feel like they haven't been completely honest with you. As an example, if you've been dealing with someone for six months, you've never met their friends, you've never met their family. It's like they keep you at a distance. There's a reason behind that. So start paying attention to that cancer. All right. Moving on here. We are last but not least, my lovely Leo. So let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to your person. How do they feel about Leo? How do they feel about Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? If you guys are interested in any of our services, any personal readings or personal spell work, you can find all of that on the description box below, as well as our journals and books. Here we go, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does your person feel about you? Let's see what's going on with Leo. Page of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, oof, and Ten of Swords. Okay. So there has been this waiting. They've been waiting to hear from you or they've been waiting and wanting uh, to reconnect, but I don't see them taking any type of action towards you, Leo. Eight of Swords with the Ten of Swords, they feel stuck. They feel like they can't, make a move or like they they're choosing not to make a move and it's almost like coming to the acceptance that it's over that it's done um if it's you leo the one that's been waiting or hoping to hear from them i feel like you're not going to be hearing from them anytime soon um try the best you can to embrace that perhaps there was a reason for this separation or breakup um if you haven't had any type of breakup or separation, but 
They're not really communicating the way they did at some point. They are completely detached from this relationship or this connection. I feel like they may be going through a lot of difficulties in their life. However, they have mentally prepared themselves to detach from the situation or to completely end the relationship. So if you're waiting to hear from them or hoping that things will get better, uh, my advice for you is don't sit and wait for them. Continue on with your life. Continue on with your journey. Um, never, ever, and this is something I tell my clients all the time, never, ever put a pause in your life for someone else. Because the thing is that when you do that, 90% of the time, they are out there living their life while you're over here waiting for them. And if they should have to uh, figure out if they want you in their life, you shouldn't want them in your life. It's that simple. A person that genuinely cares and genuinely loves you or has feelings for you is going to do what they have to do the way they did to get you uh, to maintain the relationship. And if they're not doing that, or they need time or whatever the situation may be, it's like, okay, fine, figure it out on your own, but I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, don't sit there and value, not value, don't sit there and allow them to be the ones to value your worthiness. Like, no, it doesn't work that way. And I know I don't need to tell Leo's this. You guys are regal. <laughs> you guys know you guys are amazing. And if you don't, let me remind you. You're amazing and you deserve better. So again, don't sit there and wait for nobody. You got to continue on life because the most important thing and the only thing we can never get back is time. All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did like sharing, comment, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.